Hi, Carmen. You gonna help me do this intro? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last video, while I was making my journal, I was in the background doing some fun with ice and colors. And that's what this is, which is a fabric that I bought off of uh, zeloof.com. It is a cotton fabric with some very fun embroidery on it. And well, I'm going to show you how I dyed it because one of the things that I want to do as a goal is just learn fun dyeing techniques. And so I used ice to create this dye and it was a lot of fun to do. Flashback. Sorry, buddy. No kitties allowed while I'm doing dyeing. Next melding. Well, it looks like the ice is all melted. Let's open it up and take a look. All those colors. All right, so I've still got some spots without any dye on it, but look at how cool that is. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at how this turned out. So freaking cool. End of flashback. Now that I've dyed it, the question is, is what do I do with it? So I've been sitting on this fabric trying to figure out exactly what to do. And as I was playing with it here on my dress form, one of the things I noticed, huh, wait a minute. The distance between the two peaks of the embroidery, kind of like the distance of my shoulders. And this looks kind of neat as a sleeve. So here, let me show you. Now, I only have enough length to do it folded over this way as one sleeve. I can't quite get the full length of sleeve on this side because it's only elbow length. So what I'm thinking is to do something with a dolman or all-in-one sleeve. Mustache, you silly boy. Yes. <laughs> and uh, to kind of do chitin style sleeves, so I'm thinking I'll probably have it be bell length, and then I'm thinking maybe bolero length, like somewhere I'll figure out where to end the pattern, maybe just right um, after the embroidery here. And then that leaves me with, I also dyed two more yards of a plain cotton lawn 
um, with the same dies that doesn't have the embroidery. So with the rest of the fabric that I have from this, plus the non-embroidered fabric, I can do a tank top. I practically live in tank tops, and I want some that aren't falling apart and the elastic running out on me, because that's what's happening with all of my commercially bought ones. So I'm gonna basically make a short jacket, bolero with long, fun Grecian sleeves, and have some fun with that. I still have to decide how I'm going to end the neck uh, the front opening. Still have to decide how I'm going to hem the sleeves because <laughs> I don't want to just fold it like this. I, I don't like that. But doing something where I'm going to have to cut into the embroidery and figure out a way to hem it. Fortunately, my sewing machine is also an embroidery machine. So I'm going to poke around, do some experimenting, and see what I like because I think that I can do like a scalloped edge without having to actually get into the embroidery unit. Like it'll just do a scalloped edge as one of the decorative stitches that it'll do. We're gonna take a look at how I plan, take a look at what I'm going to do to actually turn this fabric into something that I can wear as a cover up with my tank tops. And we're gonna take a look at mustache being a silly, silly boy. I might do this as a two-part video. If you're seeing this part, then I've decided to make it a two-part video. Um, just because since I'll be making two separate garments, even if they're still related to one another, it might be easier to just do one garment and one garment. <laughs> Okie dokie. So I've got my list of things to do. The ice dyed top is on page one and we're going to start working on that. Last video, of course, I showed you how I made this book, but we're going to take a look and see how I intend to actually use the book. So we're going to start off with writing down the project name, ice dyed top, and this is going to be a two piece. Today is the day we're actually going to start working on it, although I might write the start date of when I actually dyed it. Eh, I'll figure that out. My initial sketch for what I was thinking, I think you can see in the pencil, but I'm going to go ahead and work in the pen because I'm pretty happy with the general idea of the design, which is to use peaks of the embroidery as the sleeves, and we'll figure out that hem. Let's see, we can do this other one. I'm amused that I made this and and then I decided to cut my hair, so I shouldn't have put the hair in here. But the silhouette looked really weird without hair. Gotta figure out how am I dealing with the bolero style top. Draw that in for now. The idea of the design sketch here is to work out the general gist of it, and then I can figure out the actual what am I doing details later. And then for the tank top, probably going to do just a gathered up elastic waistband. And if I've got enough of the embroidered stuff on the bottom, I will do that down here as well, which I think I might have enough of. I'll figure out the neckline later. Flowers and vines and things. So that's my general sketch, and I will attach a swatch of the fabric after I've cut out most of the bits and I can actually cut a swatch. For notes, so we're going to do two pieces, bolero slash short cropped outer shell, a tank with gathered waist. Let's go ahead and sketch out the idea for this, which is going to be, this is basically the back view. At the shoulders is where a peak is, and then it comes down, and then at the elbow, fortunately, is where I've got the next one, and then right at the wrist is where I've got the last one. That's basically what the back of it's going to look like. I'm not going to have a seam here or anything like that, but I am going to have the underarm bolero sleeve. I will need to figure out how I'm ending the sleeves. Probably just do a normal rolled hem on the bottom. I may also dip into my embroidery machine and see what I'm doing there. The width of this is dictated by the pattern of the fabric. The front is going to be basically the same except for in something like that or the front. But I don't know exactly the shape of that because I'm going to need to draw out basically on the fabric itself, figure out where that seam's gonna go. 
that's our top. So I'm going to create a checklist for myself. The first thing we're going to do is mark out our back piece. And we're going to mark out front, but and with this, we're going to need to figure out, I'm going to call it collar, but it's not really a collar, it's front seam. I'm saying we. I'm going to need to hem the sleeves. How? I don't know. And then we've got our underarm. So construction of it is fairly simple. The complicated part comes into how am I finishing the sleeves and how am I finishing the front. The way that it works out is I've got wrist, elbow, shoulder, other shoulder. So this is going to be where I'd fold it in half to have symmetrical front and back. But I need to figure out how from here to the bottom am I going to actually finish this edge. Because I could do like what they've done here when they cut it and sent it to me. is just go right down the middle of this design but I think I'm probably actually gonna go a little bit in and maybe follow the design gap. But then again, I've still gotta decide how I'm actually hemming that.
I think I've decided for the sake of simplicity, I am going to leave the front and the back being pretty much exactly the same with a center front fold rather than trying to do any kind of cutting across this to make a hoat. So it's just gonna be a pullover. I marked out where my hem needs to go, bottom, marked out my side seams. So these are all set and ready to sew, but I need to actually do some sampling to figure out my stitch width and all of that good stuff. So I'm gonna spend some time doing that and I'll be back in a bit. I did in fact check that my sewing machine has a scallop stitch, but I don't think it's gonna be right for it. But I'm gonna go ahead and sew a quick sample here. And we can turn that up a bit. Yeah, okay, that does not look right. So what I think I'm gonna do, <clears throat> all right, well, we'll give that a try. All right, so I'm gonna definitely need to practice with that because <laughs> this is a free moving foot. It is quilting foot. I have it just pinned to the stabilizer. I have a line to follow. Let's give it a try. Definitely gonna need practice. All right, making some progress. I've been practicing, and as you can see, I've gotten it a lot better. I learned that I definitely need to slow down when I move the cloth, because if I go as fast as I think it needs to, I need to turn the stitch speed up, and I am definitely not that good. Like here, I tried to turn the stitch speed up, and the fill is good, but I was having trouble controlling the actual movement of the fabric. If I slow it down, the movement that I'm doing, it's going to take me quite a while to do this, but I think the results look pretty good. And then I test it out here on a section with the actual embroidery. Following that along near the end, I started to get a little tired and started moving the fabric a little bit faster. So this is something that's going to take me a while. I'm going to need to take breaks. I know what to do. So let's go ahead and update the book. So I have marked out and cut the front. I have decided not to make a collar and so we are in the process of hemming the sleeves. And I definitely have more than enough of this tearaway stabilizer to do this no problem. And it just tears away and then that stuff will eventually just kind of work itself out especially if I throw it in the wash afterwards. So I think I can stand to put a swatch in my book and there we go. Now I've got that record in there. Going to take some time to do all of that hemming. I realized that I might need to make a slight adjustment to the underarm seam because when I measured I was planning on having the front being split open and so I might need a couple of more inches on the side which of course since I've already cut the fabric I can't do but it might just be that rather than sewing all the way down to here I will only sew to about here.
adore this top. Oh my goodness. It has so much personality. I cannot help but just like swish my arms around as I'm walking around the house. I cannot wait for it to actually be warm enough for me to wear it out and about to the stores and things like that because I am just going to be sashaying around the stores. The rest of the fabric that I have will definitely work as a tank top, but the big question is, do I over dye this? I want to do some dyeing experiments where I do two layers of dye, maybe with resist in between the two, so like tie dyeing this, seeing what comes out, maybe doing some paint resist. I don't want to get it too busy with this particular one because it's already got the embroidery there, but I think it might be kind of nice to have like a strong contrast between these two fabrics, you know? Because like if I wear it right now, it's just gonna look like one piece, which is fine, but maybe I want to have it be two. So definitely let me know down in the comments if you think I should dye this a darker, deeper color, or if you think I should leave it like it is. Speaking of sashaying, oh my goodness. Oh, I wish you could have seen what he just did. He just did the whole piece that has to be picked up. Yes, he did. Yeah. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to boop that like button, um, subscribe and ring the notification bell to follow me for next adventure. I plan on doing more fun with dyeing. I want to see how much do fabric dyes act like watercolors. We'll see you later. Bye. Oh, my collarbone just popped.